The time has come, and so have... Wait, wrong game. Whatever. It's time for more Spike Out. Ugh. Oh. Feels like forever, even though it's really only like a week at a time that I do these. We're going back into Battle Street. Moving on from Team Neo Spike to the team that was the original characters from the first arcade game. Select a fighter. Hold on. Starting with this guy, Spike himself. Who is noticeably more black than he was even in the arcade original. I mean like skin tone wise. Alright. We'll just get this underway. Spikers cam. Just do just do whatever route I feel like. And just continue to feel good about the fact that this morning I finally made affiliate, so I no longer have to worry about meeting those those dumb sub goals for a long time, uh, like or ever again, rather. Oh yeah, that's right. Kind of easy to miss. Yep, that is definitely Spike. I will say I've had some experience messing around with some of these characters as they were in their original arcade game. But I had never actually like played all the way through the, the arcade version of Spike Out, even, even with Abusing Continues. Just the fact that I was playing it on an emulator just kind of... Kept uh, kept me from really wanting to go that route, just because of you know, eh, just things not always being accurate. Combined with the fact that for whatever reason, with my Model Three emulator, it does feel like even if I'm told that like the frame rate of games on Model Three, the max was 60 FPS, it feels like it's somehow lower because the game speed is slightly too fast running on that emulator. All right, but either way, this still feels like pretty much spot on for how he played. Yep, he is still he is still very much the all-rounder main character of Team Spike. Just like his son would end up being for Team Neo Spike. They even share the same special grab, which once we use that on a boss coming up, like that'll that'll be especially fun. You'll see this value. Ah, too far away. Yeah, and they doesn't launch them nearly fast, uh, high enough for me to like, unless, no, nah, but I, I basically have to like have it at a wall or something. I gotta remember as well, just because some of these combos I was practicing, you know, even though they're still against the wall, you still have to take into account like the physics and size differences that come from, uh, doing uh, these combos against bosses because they have a different weight class, naturally. All right. Ow, oh, completely missed. Yeah, suplex him. Yes, all right. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see this. Or not. Okay, I think that kind of went away a bit too far, but whatever. Like, that grab, like, the, the final damage that comes from hitting them is just so... 
It is so brutal. I think I'll have like better luck uh, if I use it against Phoenix coming up. Not to mention, I think the arena is better suited for setting up those like special attack throws into a level four. Which, if you were to be playing on a team of all spikes and were super coordinated, you could totally just keep a boss or enemies just like stuck in an infinite of getting off non-stop like level four charges. And I, actually, I think that goes for like all characters. <laughs> I was actually watching some like old uh, YouTube videos of like from like seven to eight years ago from, on on some channel that was like showing different. Uh, I, I think they were like all very old recorded videos from when Xbox Live on the original system was still wor working. And it was just him and like another person like co-oping, playing as different characters. And for certain characters, I would just see them like get an enemy or a boss into a corner and then see how long they could juggle them for by just doing a level four charge and just alternating with like exact timing on the uh, on like when they start charging and when they let go and it just keeps them it just keeps them juggled in the corner pretty much until the first moment that someone like whiffs but still it's pretty silly if you need if like as if you needed any more reason for why spike out is like is like one of the greatest beat em ups ever Hell, after playing this so much, I'm starting to reconsider what my favorite, like, arcade beat-em-up is. And I feel like this might overtake even freaking Guardian Heroes. And that was all already, like, my favorite for, like, a whole host of reasons. And... Huh! Even though I missed the jump attack, I still... I still got it in on him. Nice. Alright. Alright, final area of Spiker's Camp. Will you please just... And... Got him. Alright. I had a little bit of something going on when I got him near the wall, but not close enough. Man, this game still feels so good. Even if it's lacking some of the things I wish it still had from Final Edition. Hell, I still wish I had a means to stream Final Edition. But I don't... But, like, again, I'm pretty sure that's going to be impossible unless I get a new computer that does not have any of the weird specific issues that prevent that game from, like, looking right when in windowed mode. Because that's the only way I could record it in OBS. That's just how it is. That said, I'm pretty sure me just streaming Final Edition would actually be a bigger challenge than this because it's like, like I, uh, like in the Model t uh, Three emulator, I actually did uh, uh, adjust like the difficulty down to like the easiest, and I think even then it was still harder feeling than this uh, this game is on its easy difficulty. But I don't know, maybe that was just also because of how like. Uh, how I was feeling with like some of the characters. I do know that like After the uh, past couple weeks I've realized that Minwa is absolutely my favorite character to the point that in my free time I've been trying to do one CC's uh, With her because that's the character I've had like the best luck with Oh, I was trying to strafe that idiot
Yes, got it. All right, that worked. <laughs> I didn't get the the special throw setup I was wanting to. I kind of had to improvise, <laughs> getting a bit low on health, but whatever. I at least got through it in one piece this time instead of choking and having to use a continue like I did with Fiona. That was an embarrassment last week. All right, stage two, area one. Think I'm gonna? I think I'm gonna take. Uh, one of the two rats that leads to Astral Mall. Because I just remembered that, like, even though there are two different starting points for Astral Mall, there are still two different paths you can take each time that lead to, uh, to like, uh, different levels of, like, the same end area. So we'll show that. Alright, and... Very nice. Oh yeah, that, that's a good combo to... to remember. Oh yeah, it has to be a level 2, because waiting to level 3 just makes it whiff, if I do otherwise. Okay, but sometimes getting a level 3 off of the double sweep seems to work. Actually, hold on, I'm actually gonna test that. Ah, I think it needs to be a bit more against the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, against the wall. That absolutely helps. Oh! Alright. Oh, damn. I didn't readjust to uh, aim towards the wall. Damn it. Yes. Okay. This works. Get closer, assholes. Oh man, I started charging a bit too late. God, Spike is strong. Wow, I've I think that's the fastest, most efficient kill I've gotten on both Douglas and Gloria. Gloria, I think that's her name. Well, whatever, those two. Yeah, never underestimate Spike. It's kind of the reason you see him used a lot on, like, videos of... Especially in the arcade original, like, doing 1ccs. Because he's that good, even if he comes off as just, like, the... The the main, uh, like, sort of all-rounder character. Because he's not particularly hard to use or anything. Like, it's weird, because I think also from what I remember just messing around... Like, after doing uh, this uh, stream series for a few weeks, I, uh, like, when I was loading up... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's actually a pretty good string. Oh, yeah. Like, double sweep it to level three and just repeat. That could be, that could be good. If you time it right. And you're not getting... Yeah, if you're not uh, getting screwed up with, like, distractions or anything. <laughs> Alright. And also, you gotta have, like, a decent enough wall behind you in order for it to count.
<laughs> Spike from my favorite video game, Spike Out. Yes, it is. Hi, Arcane. How's, how's your night going? All right. Also, hope... Uh, yeah, actually, uh, looking at it, the I think the chat box is now properly, like, formatted to just where I need it to be. Going okay, just chilling. Me, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. It's been a good day. I, m I managed to finally get affiliate on Twitch. I bought a Sega Saturn from, uh, from a friend of mine this morning. So, I now have that on hand for eventually modding it. Things have been pretty good. Monster, you gonna do uh, mainly uh, putting in uh, an optical disc emulator, much like I did with my Dreamcast. That's pretty much like the only one of notes, really. <laughs> Besides that, I mean, obviously, I still need to get, like, other accessories for it that I'll, that I'll be needing, you know? Like, extra, like, types of controllers, uh, S-video cable, you know, for better image quality and things like that. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, admittedly, like, a lot of the mods that I do... Uh, generally when I can do them are very much on the simple side of things where it is just have the right tools to open up the system unplug something plug something in its place and be done that's that's the general idea Yeah, so pretty much like any type of mod that I could possibly do where it involves any amount of soldering, that's kind of out of the question for me. A, I don't have a soldering iron, and B, I don't trust really myself to use it well. Area two. Clear. Let's do this thing. <laughs> yeah, I still find it hilarious how it's like... Spike in the original arcade game was obviously like not a white guy. I think he's clearly designed to be like black, but I mean it was like kind of like the lighter shade of a black in the uh, skin tone. But like with this game and its whole attitude they went with, they found ways to make him even more black. <laughs> Oh man, I, I love that just short looping combo you can do with just like the double hand sweeps followed by like the level 3 charge move just to keep them juggled in the air high enough that you can immediately follow up. And that level 4 charge punch is still beautiful. Okay, just keep going down these sewers. Hopefully, I still do pretty well against uh, Curtis because he's kind of a pain uh, in the ass to fight. You know, if I ever do like get myself around to like playing more Final Edition to actually do a full playthrough, I might actually settle on Spike as my as my main for that game as opposed to Tension. Because I was, because I mean, after playing a lot of Minwa, I was starting to think that like I would immediately gravitate towards like playing as Tension because they seem to be pretty good analogs to each other. But I think even Spike might be better than him at that. 
if you're just trying to like have really decent combos and power just to survive. All right. Minwan went home to her home planet. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't even around for the like the first game anyway. She was introduced for this. She was, uh, she was, you know, funny enough. She was uh, considering the time frame between the arcade original and this. Like by the time of like the original Spike Out, she was literally ten years too early. Just, uh, just to rub in the uh, obvious notion that like. She uses the same fighting style as Akira from Virtua Fighter. <laughs> but for real, like, Minwa is just crazy good in this game because it's like she has, like, so many good moves that are able to, like, uh, like hit it like uh, very low levels to keep characters uh, to keep enemies juggled and she's also a very short character so when going up against really big enemies like sometimes their attacks will just not connect otherwise <laughs> man I don't even know what could possibly be like <laughs> like uh, like how you fit this uh, game setting into uh, it's a virtual fighter. Yes, all right. Yep, that's exactly why it is good to play as Spike first and foremost in uh, in the arcade uh, version more than any other characters because that combo you saw me just do that special attack throw followed by the level four shit is godlike. Let's do that again. If it'll let me. Oh, ne never mind. The, the throw killed him anyway. It does so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, here's, here's a little neat trivia about Spike Out and how it kind of pertains to, to this particular game. Like, already... Uh, on this series, I've done four playthroughs as like the new uh, as the members of Team Neo Spike, who are basically like the combat kids of this game, like the new generation uh, of characters taking up after Team Spike. Their leader is Spike Jr., who is the son of this man that we're playing as right now. In the arcade original, um, back then Spike Jr. was like literally only five years old. And uh, when you played as Spike, uh, Junior was just piggybacking on his dad's, like, uh, shoulders, like, the entire time. Until you either grabbed an enemy or you got hit by an enemy. At which point, Junior just goes flying off, starts running around on the ground, and imitates your moves. They don't do anything, but, it, but it's cute nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, just look up like any video of the of the original Spike Out, the with people playing as Spike, and it's just like his five year old son, it ju just imitating his daddy. Yes, Spike is a uh, protagonist in a Japanese game who you could say is both a people of color and a father. He is a good dad. He cares for his son. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely something you miss from like a lot of like that weird esoteric charm of like arcade Sega.
And like the and like this game by comparison, it tries to trade it in for like a more serious hard edge, you know, like early to mid 2000s like gang violence theme because that was all the rage. But it just obviously comes off as its own different type of goofy. Yep. There's still, God, it's still crazy to think how there's just so many remaining Sega arcade games that have still not gotten any kind of, like, re-release on home platforms. Like, they've done, like, they've done a few ports of, like, their Model 2 arcade games, you know? You can get Virtual Fighter 2 on Xbox Live and PSN for, like, 360 and PS3. They even, like, made a pretty impressive, like, HD uh, version of Daytona USA. But at the same time, it's like, you know, there's no Spike Outs, there's no VF3, there's no Daytona USA 2 or Scud Racer. Like, they get some things, but are still, like, lacking in others, and, like, no amount of, of like, uh, including them as playable games in Yakuza is going to be enough. Yeah! That's how you do it! <laughs> I'm with you on that. Super serious this is not always a good thing to strive for. There's all there's definitely a point though where like if someone's trying to be so self-serious that like it circles around to being a joke. Like that, uh, like Stranger of Paradise is looking to be next month. A game that I desperately wish I had a PS5 to play, but alas, I'm not going to be able to play it there. So I'm basically going to be stuck with either a GIMP PS4 version or, quote, legally acquiring a PC copy. <laughs> because fuck Epic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it feels so good playing as Spike again, especially after, like, the last couple weeks where, like, playing as Stranger... Oh, you're Googling that? that? Oh, man, yeah, it's the... It's, it's the one that everyone's been memeing about, about how Jack Garland needs to kill Chaos really badly. <laughs> for real, like, if you just looked at the trailers for the game as well as, like, interviews, you can clearly tell that, like, the... The main people behind it have absolutely, like, no idea that what they're making is just so schlocky. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's also by the same devs that made Neo. I think that's important to clarify, and it's a major reason for why people are, like, not just going, this is gonna be a bad game, because the gameplay from the various demos they put out of uh, people have gone, no, this is actually really good. <laughs> All right, here comes the boss. I know he just said it, but it's like real fun to say, obviously. I checked out for the TV show in this very Japanese game. I think you mean like, why is buff Eminem the, like the protagonist of a Final Fantasy game? <laughs> It's so silly. Special item. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Someone at Square decided to give the person responsible for Dirge of Cerberus, like, another budget. Nope. There we go. Okay, salvaged it. <laughs> Oh, 
For real though, that game looks legitimately fun, and I'm not even that big of like a Final Fantasy guy. <laughs> like, like story, plot, and characters are gonna be a mess. Gameplay is probably gonna be fun as hell. It's like, like enough more of a variance on the type of Neo gameplay that like I'm looking for, as opposed to like just something that is like way more iterative, uh, like Neo 2 was, because I sunk 600 hours or so into the first game, and it's because of that reason why I've not played Neo 2. Just because I I still feel like I have, like, I can't shake the feeling that it's going to feel like a slog trying to build myself back up to a comparable level to where I ended the first game. <laughs> this, we discussed European haircuts and now it's American haircuts for men. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that the whole idea, like... They don't give a name to, like, this specific place other than just calling it the island. But I want to say that this is, like, some Japanese developer's, like, absolute fever dream concoction of what they think Coney Island is like. That's really the only sort of explanation I can give for it. All right, still doing good. All righty. Fight. All right, now we're going to go into the basketball court to the to fight to the end boss of this stage and go to this uh, uh to like a specific area of Astro Mall. Now we can just get Yes, okay. I'm just gonna abuse the ever-loving shit out of these. If, I, if these guys could just stop decking me. Oh my god! <laughs> Watch yourself. Oh. Please, just give me... Oh, damn it! Oh, well. Continue. Obviously, there goes my 1cc, <laughs> like, attempt. These guys are always so tough to deal with. Like, the camera's kind of not being cooperative at times. There are so many dudes just, like, getting in your way. And then, of course, you have these Muay Thai fucksticks, like, constantly on your ass. All right. Yeah. Oh, God. Not the best way to end it, but whatever. Chances are I wasn't even going to be able to get the requirements for, like, a five-stage playthrough. Because that is something that I've still been... I have not been able to find, like, full confirmation on, like, how you do it in this game. I just only seem to know that there are playthroughs out there where people have gotten it. And I think that's only because... They are players who are way better and more experienced at this game than I am. But the idea is that, like, with the spot that we ended Stage 2 in, that determines, like, which of the following uh, areas for Stage 3 we're going to end up at. So we're starting at Astro Mall A, which is the starting point that has us at, like, the top of this three-story area. Seems too godly to beat this on, on one CC. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and as far as, like, I can tell, I think even the arcade version is, uh, like, on the hardest difficulty might be harder than it is on this. <laughs> you 
yeah, it's like the, like these dudes. I've I I fully realized that like I said that this feels like uh like. A, a bizarre version of like what the Japanese think Coney Island is, but then we have this mall section where there's a whole lot of Yakuza looking dudes. Remind me not to go to the ball in Japan. Oh, yeah, just... I mean, probably not Japan, just in general these days. Yeah, just like the dudes that are like not, uh, nothing in like just straight up like underwear. It's like, what were they doing prior to me coming to this mall and realizing, oh shit, there's a dude that we need to beat up. Get your onsen on and go to the food court afterwards. <laughs> That's probably how it happened, yeah. Yes, alright. Here's the perfect opportunity to set this up. Oh man, no, he's... Ugh. Okay, not the best opportunity for it. Clearly more of like, it need best chance you can get is like if it's straight in the corner. A flat wall, there's like too many other variables to like keep in mind. Oh my god, these assholes. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I'm going to kill this guy. He's close. Thank you. Pretty much in any of these boss fights, I don't think it's exactly, but there's at least always one dude in a boss fight, one of the ads, where, like, one has a health pickup and the other has a special item, like a special attack uh, stock, basically. And one thing that I think is actually like a confirmed uh, aspect of their AI is that those specific enemies that are carrying it are usually the ones always hanging in the back of a group until like there's no one left. And that's basically how you know that like the, the drops are not randomized or at least like or at least like uh, the idea that like the item drops are not a randomized chance of will they happen or not. All right. <laughs> We're getting beat up to dads on vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Spikers Island just gets a whole host of, like, weird-ass tourists. Nice. Okay. <sighs> More special attack bonuses, even though I'm already stocked up, but it's good to get the extra points. Yeah. Like, like, they know that uh, with this game in particular, like, it is an arcade beat-em-up. There is kind of a nature of its design where it's essentially trying to just overwhelm you with sheer numbers of force. Ah, hold 
on. All right, let's see if this works. No, ah, uh, still threw him too far away, but it did get him far enough away for me to take care of these dudes, temporarily. I should preface, temporarily. <laughs> There we go. And a special attack item. See? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they definitely thought about it. It's interesting, though, like, with, uh... I basically told the story multiple times at this point, but since I'm always getting new people, it was always fun to, uh, to tell it anyway. But I guess, like, the... Like, the origin behind the, uh, like... The idea of Spike Out was Toshihiro Nagoshi wanting to make an arcade beat em up where it it could go longer, like on a single credit, than any other game would. Like if a player was just that good, they could be on the machine for hours. And it's the sort of thing where like it mostly came true, but obviously they had to make the game design just be like absolute, like absolutely mean because arcade operators were like, no, we need to make money still. <laughs> And yes, Toshihiro Nagoshi, he, he directed the original Spike Out, the man that went on to make Yakuza, which everyone is in love with. And this gameplay, yeah, he tried, yeah. To be fair though, it is like, if you do manage to get like a five stage run, it is like a 1cc of it is effectively, like, if you're doing all five stages with the longest routes on each of them possible, then like, it turns out to be like just under two hours. That's basically how long it goes for. Maybe one of these days if I'm bored and I don't... And I want to do something Spike Out related, but not actually play Spike Out. I might just uh, queue up one of those, like, like 1cc playthroughs and just, like, watch it to give commentary on it. Plus, it's like I'm always re-watching those videos anyway just to see if, like my stubborn brain can actually take some of those uh, strategies to heart to better improve my chances at surviving. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, 1cc videos of arcade games, they, they never fail to entertain, really. And, like, be informative if you're that into the game as is that you want to get good with it. Or at least try to approach getting that good. Because admittedly, a lot of the 1cc videos I've seen for Spike Out are people who are, like, that good that they can do it on the hardest difficulty. And I am nowhere near that. Alright, keeping the boss at bay, roughly. Oh, come on. Alright, that works. <laughs> It's the whole town bought by the bad guys. <laughs> it's still so freaking unclear. I assume, like, this town is just running, like, everything it can to act like it's normal. It's just that the gangs are causing so much trouble. Though at the same time, I would not be... Wait, no. Like, the final area that we go to is literally like an opera house. That is the base of operations for the bad guy. So, you know, I'm gonna say, yeah, it is probably just run entirely by them at this point. Probably not for the entire... <laughs> okay, I, li I like that detail I just did. Like, the dude was trying to barge out the door, and my attack lined up in just the right way that I was like, no, get the fuck back in your room. <laughs> he still he still came out, though, but whatever. That was, that was a good shot. <laughs> But yeah, Team uh, Neo Inferno, like, uh, they're like the biggest gang, and they keep trying to cause problems until S Team Spike comes around and just, like, beats them all up. 
Yeah, there can't be any more crime if I literally beat up everyone else that could do crimes. The math checks out. Oh, man. All right, time for the boss of this area. Followed by a route split. Which, if I could just... Yes, okay. Come this way. Wang, get over here. Get over here now. Thank you. Good. Now it's just you and me. Oh my god, camera, please! Oh, man. You know mess with Lo Wang. Wait, wrong game. <laughs> for real though, it's like this is actually like one of the recommended like strats for like dealing with this boss. Is just use like the the sliding doors to just get him separated from his cronies. <laughs> All right, now. When I went through this route, I took the path on the left before. I'm going to take the path on the right. Just to keep things different from how it's been for the past four weeks. Yep, yeah, like... Definitely, I like a good chunk of the strategies for, like, getting through spike outs. Either the arcade original or this is to divide and conquer extensively. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Still pretty good on time. Because that is one thing to always keep in mind when playing Spike Out is that besides getting knocked out, you can like, lose your 1cc attempt if you run out of time. Because that's how they keep the pace going. You actually can technically turn off the timer in the in the starting game options for when you do a run of Battle Street. But I, I feel like doing that doesn't make it spike out anymore if you do so. And just and, and still thinking again about like all the other type of things I could be doing like that are spike out related besides you know watching videos. I do feel like by the end of like this first stretch of my journey, I really should do a stream that is like assuming as well that I can get like enough people tuning in just to make sure. But I do want to do a video that's uh, a stream that's basically just me doing a live lecture on the ins and outs of spike out mechanics, like how it works, what are the controls, like how. Like, what's the combo theory, etc. The, like, the details about enemy AI differences between regular mooks and the bosses. Because it's got depth to it. It's why this is, like, the best 3D type of uh, arcade beat-em-up ever made. You know, like, because I, I like stuff like Dynamite Decca, and even I think this is better than that. I mean, even, like, the, the core gameplay of this is better than straight up any of the, like, the Yakuza games 
that, uh, like, obviously not counting like a dragon since that's a JRPG. Oh god, am I gonna die? Nope! I'm still in it! Yes! All right. And I got my special attack back. Thank you. All right. Now we're heading into the parking garage. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's like more people in general really do need to know more about Spike Out because it is the sort of thing where I mean, like it probably isn't like that surprising that like for a long while, I feel like old school beat em ups have gotten kind of a bad rap from people that are like, I'm going to call them fake forward thinkers in this case where they feel like like the modern crop of 3D action games essentially makes old old style beat em ups obsolete when that's clearly not the case and like obviously with like arcade beat em ups like they're more common in the 2D realm as opposed to like 3D like this is so like spike out being this good in a weird way is almost an anomaly camera if i swear to god could you just stop getting caught on the pillars Thank you. And it would just be really nice. Like, if, if it doesn't get the attention of Sega, then at the very least it would be nice to get it, uh, the attention of, like, other people. So that maybe then they could try shouting at Sega in vain to get them to actually remember this series and put out, like, a port of the arcade game. I mean, this as well would be nice, but granted, I think, like, the, the original, like, Model 3 arcade game is of a higher priority. Because while the levels here and, like, the boss orders are the same, like, there are, it, like, Battle Street is essentially, I'm going to say, 95 to 98% the same. Did it have more story? Not really, other than the fact that, like, it takes place 10 years before this does. And the whole idea is that Team Spike, which, you know, Spike himself is the leader of, is basically, like, him and his team, what uh, what they end up doing is that, like, they have to fight the leader of Team Inferno, who is causing problems on this island, so they gotta, so they gotta beat the shit out of him and all of his cronies to teach him a lesson. That's basically it. It's, it's an arcade game. It's naturally very light on story and context. It's, it's actually a lot more vibrant looking in terms of color palette, if we're being honest. Battle Street tries to make things a bit more drab and, like, quote, realistic looking. But, like, things that are, like, different is that, um, the first level of the arcade of... Uh, well, a Final Edition specifically, because when I talk about the arcade game, there were technically two releases, and Final Edition is what everyone that cares a lot about Spike Out plays, because, like, as the name implies, it's the Final Edition. It's the one that has all of the stages that got featured in Battle Street. And, like, that game, it starts at, it, like, the, the opening level is slightly different. There are some changes to kind of how the enemies spawn in and bosses. To the possibility of a final fight streetwise playthrough in the works. I'm gonna say no. I think there's a, a higher chance of me doing a beatdown Fists of Vengeance playthrough on this channel before I do final fight streetwise, if at all. <laughs> All right, let's get these guys separated. Okay. 
Actually, this might have been a bad idea because I do not know if these characters are these enemies are going to give me more time if I beat them up quickly. Oh, damn it. Yeah, okay, we'll do it this way. I gotta focus. No, 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 I might get a time over. This is bad. Yeah, yeah, this is bad. I should not have... I should not have hung back and taken care of those two dudes when they were isolated because that's not enough. God. Ugh. All right. One KO and one time over. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. We'll now continue. Um. Yes. I think I still am not entirely sure on what the logic is behind it. I think it's the sort of thing where, kind of like with the health and special uh, special attack item drops, is that they are set, I think, to... It's a mix of whether you manage to kill specific enemies or beating up, like, X number of enemies in a group. Like, that's the, that's the idea behind it. Also, we're now in, like, the... Like, one of the entrances to the mall that is just all Sonic-themed. Alright, you do that. Ooh, 13-hit combo, hell yes! Alright. Alright. Ow. Oh, wait, that's right. I, I definitely need to... Oh, my God! Oh, that is mean! Alright, come on. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I gotta stop making these kind of mistakes where, where I am not doing enough dividing and conquering of all these, of all these dudes. I'll take it. And take that. Okay, get up here. Asshole. Ah, damn it. Oh, yeah. Nine hit combo. Special item. Oh, come on! Stiff me! Ah, shoot. No! Oh, please, just let me get the... No! Please, just get off! Oh, wow, that, that was way too close.
All right. Okay. Oh, shit. No. Oh, my God. Please just stop. Oh my god, oh wow, that was way too freaking close. Look at my health bar. <laughs> oh, just carried myself on that magic pixel. Why don't I? <laughs> just holy crap. Go to the next stage, and there we go. On to the Imperial Opera. No shipyard for this playthrough, but that was a given. It really does feel like... If getting all five stages in a row is literally based entirely on score then it's like maybe doing it on easy is possible i just am not doing like the the best i can as far as maximizing on points And let's keep going. Oh, man. It's too far away. Oh, come on. Just grabbing me out of thin air like that. Huh, knocked him back to the hedge maze. He's dead. Yeah. Still kind of a shame that like the the reach on that uh on that homing jump is just not doing it for me. I feel like that might be uh Yeah, it might just have to be something that I save for like whenever I play as Minwa. Because her, her reach seems to be a lot stronger. Jeez. This side on... This side on just letting me actually... Like, which enemy I want to hit. Got it. Okay, camera, seriously, why are you this inept in getting behind my back? Seriously, this is like another thing that I will always stress about with this game. Like, even though in the arcade game, like, the 3D camera is not perfect, it is a whole lot better than what this game ends up doing at times with its, uh, with the camera. Like, seriously, I do not get why it seems to miss the point that, like, when I'm sprinting and going from battle to battle, that it is not just simply, like, defaulting to my, uh, to my back. You know? Like, actually centering behind me. Alright. It is what it is, though. I do find it funny, though, that it's like... When it comes to, like, bad cameras in action games, I'm somehow, like, at this point, more tolerant of how bad it gets in something like Ninja Gaiden compared to this. Ah. All right. 
Nice. I can still chain three of those back to back. That's nice. I'm still good on time. I'm kind of lower on health than I would like. But this might change once I do what needs to be done. Yep. Got some health. Lure the boss away. Get him as far, far away from his cronies as best I can. Assuming he doesn't get stuck. Get over here. Ah, oh, damn it. Like that. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's only been a strategy I've seen from 1cc playthroughs that I think was easy enough for me to just get through my head that, no, I really should be doing it all the time. It's really not worth dealing with all the extra enemies considering how easy it is to run very low on time going through this hedge maze. Now then. The question is, now that I'm at this part, am I going to want to take the main entrance into the opera house or do I want to stick to the, uh, uh, to the side path? I mean, the latter will obviously add more to time, but I think it will also lead to more deaths. Just because I'm still not entirely used to, like, a particular, uh, like, boss encounter before we get inside the Opera House proper. Oh. I'll, I'll decide on a whim. I'm not gonna knock on the other door to summon Emperor, though. I think I'll... Actually, I'll save that for, like... When I do another playthrough where I go through Astro Mall B and head to the food court. Because I know with that, like, uh, like in the actual food court itself, that's like the second appearance where you fight King. So I want to see how I do in a playthrough where I specifically try and go for, like, a double King fight followed by Emperor at the end. Ah. Oh my god, stop ganging up on me. Dog fed. That that's good. Glad the pupper is nice and full. There it is. All right, now get away. Oh, man, I accidentally aggro two of them. That's not good. Shit. All right, we'll still do it this way. Yeah! Oh, wow, that just took him out in one go. And the, and the other. Oh, man. You do not mess with Spike. Are the NPC names randomly generated? They are not. They are all handpicked. There's a whole lot of, like... Oh, like, obviously the bosses... Uh, boss names are the exact same. But same goes for even just the regular mooks. Okay. Front entrance or side... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll stick to the... No, no. I, I think I'm fine with adding a bit of extra time to this playthrough. I am going to take this side path. Yeah, there's a whole lot of names for the uh, for the enemies you go up against, you know? Uh, but And there's also some that are kind of hilarious to look at. Like, there's one in the stage that we did not go to called the Shipyard. And um, 
There's like a uh, there's like a, a a female character who's I'm pretty sure her name was supposed to be Grace, but as this is a Japanese game and was clearly translated by the Japanese like devs themselves, it got mistranslated to Glace. And the best part is that name is still in this game. <laughs> it was it was not a thing that they decided to fix when they when they made this Xbox version. <laughs> And at least as far to my knowledge, I think that's the only instance of like a, a of a name that feels like it's clearly mistranslated. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, and, and like that's the other thing with like the large characters that's like an interesting quirk with like dealing with enemies is that you could do like throws on them, but like especially like uh I, I forget if it's just the back throws or if it's any grounded throws, but if you use them against like a large heavy enemy, you know, stuff, uh, characters like Glace or like some of the, some of the Yakuza looking enemies that we went up against in the mall, if you try and do like a ground throw on them, like you'll actually damage yourself as a result of like their weight being greater than yours, <laughs> which is like a detail that I, I recall like having existed even in the Streets of Rage games, I think it was. Like I think on like some of the, on the big heavy enemies you couldn't like get off like throws on them because of that all right now, just to keep moving forward. Sometimes it is totally practical and valid to just do that kind of... He spiked me. Ah, oh, damn. I was trying to set up that, that special grab throw, but it just did not work. I screwed it all up. Ah, damn it. Ah, there we go. Still came out on top. Area three. Clear. Let's do this thing. Okay. Still doing all right on this run of the opera house. We'll know for sure, like, how well or poorly I do once I get to the next boss fight, which is like a triple threat. Where it's like I'm dealing with like three specific bosses that come at me on an extremely narrow stairway. That went really well. Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, get away from the flames. Still managed to hit him. 
Even as, as he was running around to my backside, just the tracking, he could not get away from it. Alright. Seriously, camera, you're drunk. Aw, oh, damn it, I was trying to get in. Get the fuck out of here with that flamethrower shit. Nice. All right. We're still at it. Ah. Those flamethrowers we can actually use, funny enough. But it's just that it's not really that practical because you're you subject yourself to like the similarly like long startup animation for when you use it. It's actually more practical to use in the final, like in the arcade original, but for like a very specific instance. Because what the arcade game has that Spike Out Battle Street doesn't are bonus games in between each stage. You know, kind of kind of similar in vain to like the, you know, like the old Street Fighter 2 bonus stages where it was like breaking a car or something like that. But it's kind of more varied and still technically has to do with the act of beating up dudes. I think one of the the special bonus games... Oh god, all three of them at once. Why did I... Oh shit, this is gonna be bad. I really should have just... Oh, damn it. No! Mmm! Wow, okay, the frame rate is not holding up. Yo! Okay, alright. Alright, we're back in it. I know this strategy, though, would absolutely not fly if I was somehow playing this on the arcade original, but I don't care. Yes! Oh, wow. I was not expecting to survive this. Knowing how much of a pain this was like the other times I had tried it. Oh yeah, this is great. That, and like what I did was normally not what, it, what was supposed to happen. I think I the, I the thing that I had forgotten was that as soon as you enter that stairwell, you have to stay at the very bottom and just see like how many come down to fight you. And it's usually one to two of the bosses. I somehow managed to get all three on my ass, along with the flamethrower dudes, and I still fought back with my raw power. <laughs> oh man, I freaking love Spike Out! Yeah. Go. Hell yes. Yeah, I think, uh, thinking back on it now, well, I guess it's still kind of hard to say if this is now, like, my, uh, favorite, uh, beat em up, just because it's, like, I specifically like, I think, Final Edition more. Like, I still feel that's the, the better game, even though I've done more complete playthroughs on Battle Street than I have that. It's just kind of a pain sometimes with how Model 3 emulation is. But it's it's the sort of thing where I think Spike Out as a concept, like I'm gonna say that in order to include both my experience with this game and with the arcade original, I think it is starting to be my favorite like beat 'em up, even eclipsing Guardian Heroes, because like uh, because for the longest time it was like Guardian Heroes had so many things about it that made me love it so much. One of which was that it was developed by Treasure, which you know that. That, that already says everything. I think I gotta go for now. Doc's causing a ruckus. That's alright. Thanks for dropping by, though.
Yeah, you too. Ah. It's a shame that, like, the rising knee for Spike hits just a bit too high because it's otherwise not very good for sustaining a juggle when they get that low to the ground. Ah, well, it's whatever. He completely missed his head. Whatever, at least I knocked him over the banister. I think that, that counts. That's good enough. Alright, here it comes. Immelman's gonna be the next boss, and he'll spawn immediately after this transition, so I just gotta run to the other end of the hallway. Right. Here comes the boss. And just deal with these guys! Oh, man. I really gotta stop wasting those those specials like that. Yeah, especially since I can just do, like, a regular breakout. Okay, not that time, admittedly. Oh, come on! It's always the side throws. Again! Every time! No, you don't! Ah. Okay, the other guy did this time. Alright. Now for the other guys. Let's hope I manage okay. Oh, come on, no! Oh, God, am I gonna get a time over as well on this? Please, just... No! Are you kidding? They didn't give me an extra bit of time. Oh, what a pain. Ugh. I was hoping that if I had to get a time over on this stage, it would be against, like, the specific, like, three bosses that I was thinking about. Not the ones I just fought, but, like, the ones, like, in the next zone. Now you've really made me mad. Ah. Damn you. <laughs> Fine. We'll do it this way. Area 5. Clear. <sighs> Shit. All right. Why do I keep trying to do, like, a level 4, like, at that point in the combo when it's clearly not working? They're knocked away too far, and they always completely crumple before it can even connect. God. 
Ugh. I really do need to get used a lot more to the, those heavy jump kicks, you know, where like it has like the, the old VF style like moon, uh, moon gravity. Because there are ways like that to connect it to make good combos, but like it's so tricky to line up and time. Because sometimes it's like you have to, like once you've done the jump press so that confirms that it's going to be like a long one and not like a short jump, that you got to be very quick to hit either charge or beat in order to do the kick follow up and have it actually connect. Otherwise, you'll just whiff as it goes straight over their heads. really wish this camera would just stop. Stop giving me angles that aren't, like, some degree of behind my back. It's really frustrating. Alright. So we've had two time overs and one KO. Let's see how this works. All right, we'll do it this way. No. Camera, I swear to fucking Christ. All right. All right, we'll do it this way. Get a special attack back anyway. That's... Eh. All right, let's do this. Yeah! Look at that, finally! For once in my life, after what feels like so long, I finally was able to beat those without running out of time. Ugh. It just sucks I had to run out of time against Immelman, of all things. Still, good things to learn. Spike, out, uh, Spike himself is definitely shooting up to be, like, very close to the same tier as Minwa for me. Maybe even better. I'm not sure. It's either down to those two now as far as, like, which one I'm going to use for when I can finally... Start attempting proper 1ccs. Alright. Lure some of these guys up here. Yep. I'm in a good mood. I'm just going to keep milking these guys for all they're worth. Yes. All right. I will say one thing that, like, Spike Jr. absolutely has an advantage over his dad. Spike Jr.'s back throw is significantly, like, I think more practical to use. Uh, for, like, uh, for splitting up, uh, foes. Because rather than doing a suplex like Spike himself does, Jr. just grabs, uh, the dude's back, punches it really hard, and sends them flying.
Dude, oh my god. Dude. There we go. We got some more time. Yes. All right. Oh, he's too far away. All right, this is good, though. Oh, damn it. Hold on. Yeah, I think these are the last few. Yeah! Alright! No time over. I got all of his ads. That's 27 KOs. Alright. Yeah, so this really is turning out to be... If I don't choke against me, Kyle. That's basically three continues use. Two of which are time over. So hey, I'm at least... I feel like I'm becoming more often than not be uh, better at avoiding getting killed as opposed to just getting running out of time because of other bullshit. No, no, come on. Oh, this might be bad. No, oh, fuck off. No, no, please stop it. No, and I... And I still don't have any other... Why is he not getting off? Ah, oh, damn it. Oh. oh, that was not good. I'm doing really poorly already. Trying to... Oh, it's... It's really becoming a pain just because I cannot figure out where I'm aiming at the moment. There's too many dudes! Like, fuck off! No! Oh my god. Yeah, we're going off. We're getting another health pickup. And I'm, even though I'm probably going to run out of time anyway, this is not good. Mm. Oh, never mind. We're back in it. No, please. All right, we'll do it this way. Have at it. Please, just... God, just stop it. No! Ugh. Okay. Three time overs then. Continue. Come on. All right. Oh, damn it. It wasn't in the corner, though. Fine. We'll do it this way. We'll do what I couldn't do at the start because I had wasted all my... Uh, all of my freaking, like, specials. Ah.
All right, get over here. Come on. Dude! What is your deal? The collision just completely failed me on that. There we go. Oh. Here I go. There, fine. Only one KO at the end of Diesel Town. One time over in Astro Mall A, two time overs in Imperial Opera. All right. That's less continuous still even compared to like my first run as Minwa, which was still pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, but that was that was tonight's run. Spike is really good. He is just so good. Like, I'm curious to see how I feel about, like, playing his tension, considering how, like, I had initially thought that, like... Like, maybe it's still the case that him and Minwa are supposed to be, like, the parallels between each other on their respective teams. But even then, it's just, like, Minwa, like, her attacks are so much stronger than I felt even tensions were in the arcade version, but that might... Uh, but that might just be because just because things are a lot harder even in final edition oh yeah but while i'm at it uh, something that like i kept trying to remind myself to actually uh to actually show off uh that you can do in this game you have taunts and i've never found like a place to actually use them just because why would i in the in the midst of battle thanks yeah so like that was doing a quarter uh, that was doing a full 360 plus beat. That's thanks. Sorry. Yeah, and like that's uh yeah, the first one was 360 four uh to the right, so like clockwise, and then counterclockwise and beat is, is sorry. And there's supposed to be like a third one I'm missing. But I... Hold on. Nah. Okay, it's not quite... I think it was... Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's B plus charge. With uh, 360. If I can... Yeah. The tricky part, though, is that, like, when I press it, it's like, it immediately starts charging up, and I can't... Like, if I let go of the button to release the charge, it's going to, like, interrupt it. But here's what's most important. Not that, though, actually. Let's see. What can I do? Okay, it's not... Okay, I, I did counterclockwise. Yeah. You do, like, a full 360 clockwise plus a beat plus charge plus jump. You get a taunt that when you use it in the actual game, it uses up one of your special attacks. But, uh, but when it does, it counts as an attack. And unsurprisingly, I have seen like some playthroughs of Spike Out where like people will use this on bosses that have like a magic pixel of health left and just do it to like style on them. And to make up for the fact that I failed to actually show it off for the previous five characters, I'm just going to quickly run through uh, the members of Team Neo Spike. And show off, like, what all their taunts look like. Fight. Thanks, man. Yep. That's his thanks. And then... Yeah. 
Hold on, why is it not? Sorry. Yep, that's his sorry. The like the the input registry for this, I feel is a bit finicky. Help. Yep, that's his help. And then of course. Oh wait, no, that's not the right one, but. Yeah, he just starts dancing like a, like a freaking dork. Not that special. All right, here's Minwa, the best girl. Let's see what she's got. Fight. Thank you. Yep, that's her. Thanks. Yep, and then, Come and, help me. and now her special. Let's see. Uh, 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 bring it on. Yeah, that's not bad. Fit some Bachi Chuan moves in the middle of that. It's fitting for her. All right, let's see. Next is Jackal. Let's see what he's got. Yeah. Damn it. Just... Sorry. Uh, again, I keep thinking that, like... I keep thinking just charge by itself somehow is using a taunt, but no, it's like for thanks and sorry, they both required you just like doing the full circle motions like clockwise or counterclockwise, but with beats. Help me. Yep. And now. Come on. Yeah, not really that interesting. He didn't even go in for an attack. Select it's whatever. Fighter. Now we got Fiona. All right. Fight. And then. Thanks. Yep. Sorry. Mhm. Mm yep, those are expected. No, that wasn't the the special taunt. It was just a regular special. Now, come on. Yep, just just the, the end of that is a little like backhand to the dick, and it just knocks him away. Good to know. Oh yeah, we should also double check. Like, does Arc Fang have her own? Like, she has to, even though she's kind of like a weird bonus Fight. character. Oh yeah, she still does. Sorry. There we go. I think it's still actually the same animations. All right. Ah, damn it! I was trying to get like a better angle for this. Is it actually? Oh man, I've. It's weird, because I feel like I only have, like, the best luck with uh, getting these to proc if I'm, like, facing away from the camera. Like, I'm starting to think, like, the 360 motions, they have to start relative to, like, uh, their starting point has to be where you're intending to face. Now, come on. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. It's just showing off for Tonfas, which doubles as an attack. That's nice. Okay, that does it for tonight. Yeah, just another intense sub two hours of spike out. That, that was definitely fun. Yeah, like it, it. Pretty much no matter the game, playing a spike, just regular spike, is already going to be like a good option no matter what. You know? 
Spike Jr. himself is pretty good, but like outside of like a key difference in his bag grab, I really don't think he's that much better than his old man. I don't think either of them are beating Minwa, uh, at least in my ranking. I still need to see how like the rest of Team Spike fare because I really want to. I want to hope that at the very least, that White and Linda are like better characters compared to like their analogs in Jackal and Fiona, respectively. So, gonna close off. And oh yeah, I guess just as one extra thing to do a bit differently than how I have been because I've. Uh, let me double check the list. Yeah, okay, so. I, I've I've actually been like meaning to try and get into the habit of actually raiding other channels like when I'm done with streaming I think the problem been at least of at least early on when I was starting was that hey, I didn't have that many uh, Mutuals I knew and the times that I was usually streaming at there wasn't anyone else I knew that was online and streaming at the time but now that list has expanded I'm feeling pretty good about myself especially after like finally reaching affiliate that I do kind of want to, you know, even if it's a small amount of viewers, I still want to send some people their way. So, I'm going to be raiding Mr. Goemon, the the Green Dragon of of River City. I think he's, if I recall, like, I think he's playing, uh, like, uh, some Hanafuda with Gur. Probably getting his ass kicked as well. Might be fun to watch. I know I will. I'm definitely wanting to, like, kick back and take it easy uh, after this. So thanks again for everyone th that watched. Um, don't count on there being any streams for next week with the exception of next Saturday, obviously. I'm, I, I've decided now that I got like this major goal of mine to like pass at like the 4-2 this time that it did, I'm, I don't feel nearly as pressured to keep streaming in order to ensure that I get those numbers up. So, I'm giving myself a bit of a break. Take the time along with, like, my, uh, one week off from work to get some other things done. Refresh myself. Maybe work on figuring out what the hell kind of, like, like, channel point redeems and emotes I want to add to this channel. Because there's a lot of, there's a whole lot of stuff that opens up once I'm now, like, once we're at this point, uh, uh, with this channel. So, that will be it. Thank you for watching. Take care now.